Today in America, our system of criminal justice is on trial. From asphalt boulevards across the nation, to the hardwood of the NBA and the WNBA, to the clay diamonds of Major League Baseball, a groundswell of opposition has emerged against police misconduct, systemic racism, the soaring incarceration rates wrought by the 70s and 80s war on drugs, drugs are menacing our society. and the over-aggressive prosecutions and sentencing of the Three Strikes era. Still the purveyors of the old system, a system that over 60% of the American public say they've grown weary of, continue to strike at the cords of fear. And tough on crime district attorneys in most jurisdictions accept the conventional wisdom that higher rates of incarceration lead to lower rates of crime, believing that the more people who are behind bars and the longer they stay there, the safer the public will be. You have to arrest people and you have to try people. And they have to go to jail for long periods of time. I can't breathe! But in the birthplace of American technological innovation, California's Silicon Valley, District Attorney Jeff Rosen has been implementing a series of groundbreaking reforms that are proving there is a better way. We need to have change as a constant state. I, I think one sense that people have that's not quite true is in order to have low crime, we need to have a lot of people in custody. And that's actually not true. Um, it took me a while to figure that out. It's not like I knew this after I was elected or even knew this when I started in the DA's office. Starting as a young misdemeanor deputy, Rosen worked his way up the ladder to become the lead prosecutor in the county's highest profile trials. In the hundreds of rape and murder cases he filed, Rosen had a near perfect conviction record. But Rosen also saw an office that too often prized convictions and harsh sentences over the ethical pursuit of truth. Today, I formally announce my candidacy to be the next district attorney of Santa Clara County. In 2010, Jeff Rosen ran for district attorney and won, promising to be tough on crime while also vowing an end to prosecutorial misconduct. At the age of 43, Rosen would now lead over 600 attorneys and staff from the county seat in San Jose, serving almost 2 million people in an area covering over 1,300 square miles. As he settled into his new position, Rosen began to recognize that serving the best interests of the community would have to mean more than just headline-grabbing convictions. He began to question the basic fairness of the system he oversaw and to look for more just ways to serve the greater community. Convictions would no longer be enough for Jeff Rosen. In the summer of 2016, that search took him on a fact-finding trip sponsored by a justice reform think tank. So the, the trip that I took to Germany with the Vera Institute had a very profound effect on me uh, for a few reasons. So I, I went with a group of other uh, prosecutors and prison directors and academics and activists both from the right and the left that were interested in criminal justice reform and interested in, in seeing what a different prison system and, and criminal justice system looked like. Hollywood producer and prison reform activist Scott Budnick was one of those on the Germany trip with Rosen. We just saw a system whose values were so differently rooted than ours. Um, the whole system was built around rehabilitation, in second chances, but somehow in the United States, we give 25 to life and then add a 25 to life gun enhancement and a 25 to life gang enhancement and think that like, once we give them 75 to life, then we've got our pound of flesh. But it's not like that anywhere else in the world. And they really think we are barbarians. So to be on that trip alongside Jeff for that experience was profound. And then Jeff left us and went to visit the concentration camps in Poland and in Germany after our trip. And I just think that combined experience led him to really rethink a way that him and his colleagues have been doing business for decades. So for me, it was a, a very personal trip because uh, my dad and my dad's family uh, had spent uh, three years in Nazi concentration camps during World War II, and my father and grandmother and the rest of my dad's family was liberated from the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. And, uh, you know, I was really 
confronted by, so here's this place, Germany, which did these terrible things uh, to my people and to my family. Um, and then within 40 or 50 years, they have this really modern, rehabilitative, innovative, compassionate criminal justice system, and it's working. What is asinine about our current policy is that we sentence someone to many years in prison and require no transformation and don't provide the things that evidence and data and common sense tell us this is how you help somebody. I mean, there's no one I've met in the criminal justice system who wasn't a victim as a child long before they ever victimized anybody. And so when I saw prisons in Germany that treated the inmates with dignity and respect, they wore their own clothing, they had programs and academic classes to help them become better people, I thought this is a society that is demonstrating that it cares about everyone. And I thought, in America, we care about everyone also. And so we need to have a criminal justice system that demonstrates that, that shows people, the whole community, that we care about everyone. Even if you've committed a crime and broken the law, even if you have to be sent to jail or sent to prison, we still care about you. By late summer that year, Santa Clara's thermometer on criminal justice reform had reached a boiling point. County sheriff deputies had beaten a mentally ill man to death in his jail cell. Whether that person lives on the street or is in that jail, that person deserves human dignity, is entitled to be treated like a human being. Earlier today, we charged three correctional officers with murder for the beating death of mentally ill inmate Michael Tyree. And understand what a big deal this is, because law enforcement and the DA, they work hand in hand. They have to. So it is a big deal when a district attorney says, you know what, law enforcement committed a crime and I'm going to prosecute them. Well, it was a very dramatic finale to this trial. The three correctional deputies all found guilty of second degree murder. It's a sad day when law enforcement officers are convicted, when those who are sworn to uphold the law and protect others instead choose to victimize and in this case, kill a mentally ill inmate. So. What he did was a major statement to the community that we're not going to turn uh, away, we're not going to ignore these kinds of things that happen, and we're going to take a stand and do what we think is right. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In the 1970s and 80s, our criminal justice system went to war against the recreational drugs of the 60s, and the prison population in America soared. One of the young men of color caught up in that war was Kelvin Jones. We looked around that bench, man, it was about 10 of us at the bench. And we said, man, you know how many years is at this table right here? And, and none of us is over 25 years old. It was enough time at that table to take us way back into slavery. He, got, he had a year, he had life plus 20. He has 27. He got 32. I think I had 14 or 13. He has 27. He got 17. We started adding it up. We said this stuff would take us all the way back to past 1865 at this point. We said, you know what, man? Did you notice how quick they ran us through that court and gave us all that time for a non-violent crime? We didn't get convicted. We're prisoners of war. Every human being has value. And the way that some people are still operating in the criminal justice system is essentially throwing people away. They are down on their luck. They have made a mistake. They have unresolved trauma of their own. They lack coping skills uh, or mechanisms so that they can get better. 
the common adage that I agree with wholeheartedly is that hurt people hurt people. So to just cast people away cuts against the principles that any human being has. Jensen Ramos was serving four life sentences while supervising a prison rehabilitation program that matched inmates with rescue dogs. We're prepping them to become service dogs for veterans with PTSD. And it, it takes time, but what it takes is trust. And I knew that it had to start with me. And I had, I started sitting down and just, you know, conversing with guys and just letting them know like how they're doing, letting them know how proud I am of the work that they've done. And for a lot of guys that has, that's meant everything. And for them, because they've never heard it before. You know, for us, we've, for guys who are incarcerated, so many of us have been just kicked when we were down. And we, when we were being kicked, we were being kicked some more. You know, we never were told that we were good enough. And You know, the, the reality is, uh, across the United States, we incarcerate millions of people, many of whom are not a risk to public safety, many of whom are languishing behind bars for years longer than necessary to keep our community safe. By doing that, by over-incarcerating at the scale that this country does, we're actually taking precious public dollars away from violence prevention, away from mental health treatment. We're seeing more prisons being built than we are universities. The state is spending more on incarceration than we are on educating individuals. Now the state budget is a reflection of values, and that's not the values of California. And then I started looking at a little bit the history of incarceration and crime in the United States, and I found something that was very surprising to me which is that before the drug war in the 1970s and 1980s, we had both, we had a low incarceration rate. Uh, crime was a little higher than we wanted, but we had a very low incarceration rate. And so I, I, I started to question whether there was really a causation between incarceration and crime. For Rosen, it was the start of a series of reforms in the DA's office that continues today. What I realized and what I experimented with in the DA's office was trying programs that diverted more and more people out of the criminal justice system towards drug treatment, towards mental health treatment, and then look to see whether those people came back and committed crimes and wound up in jail and prison. We've had 24 men commuted by the governor in our program, which is more than any program across the state, and our success rate um, for graduates of our program is 0% recidivism. Not one person that's gone through Pause for Life program has returned to custody. Today, Rosen's reforms have become a far-reaching agenda of changes aimed at remaking the system of justice to be more fair, more effective, and more respectful for the entire community. When I started in the DA's office, uh, I started with a group of eight other prosecutors, all white men. And today, half of our office are women. Half of the managers in our office are women. 40% of our prosecutors are African American, Latino, Asian American, or LGBTQ. And that was a purposeful decision that I made to try to diversify this office to reflect this community. We make better decisions that serve our community in a better and fairer way and the community feels and sees that we look like them, represent them, and have their best interests in mind. The prosecutors have a lot of power and a lot of authority. In fact, more than judges, because they get to decide who gets brought into the criminal justice system and how they're brought in. In the past, we tended to look at charging cases as, what can we charge here? What are all the different crimes that can be charged here? And let's charge that. And now our approach is much different. We're asking the question, what should we charge, not what can we charge? Jeff is nuanced and balanced. And he knows that there's not one result that fits every bad deed. 
He wants to look at why something happened. What will the result be if we send someone to probation, if we send someone to school, if we send someone home, if we keep them out of state prison and keep them in local jail. So Jeff recognizes that there is not one solution to crime. We've created a new unit within our office to review all matters of excessive force or other crimes committed by police officers to make sure that we're being fair and we're being consistent and being transparent with the community about what we're doing. So I think what Jeff is doing and saying, again, sending a message to other prosecutors in the state, if you see this and you believe you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt, it shouldn't matter if the person is in law enforcement or not. I was at a meeting recently where I made a comment to at this meeting and I said, you know, I want to be, be able to look at how we're setting bail. Someone from the district attorney's office said to me, well, we're not using bail as the primary decision maker here. And so getting rid of cash bail and letting a judge decide whether to hold someone in custody before trial, not only are we going to make ourselves safer, because we're going to have the people that are really dangerous in custody, not just poor people. But we're also going to take those hundreds of millions of dollars that poor communities used to pay to bail bondsmen, which are large companies, and instead that money will remain in the community, working for the community. A devastatingly accurate criticism toward the criminal justice system is how uncoordinated it can be for people who truly need help. Imagine a battered woman shell-shocked and exhausted, trying to schedule appointments with law enforcement, the local district attorney's office, and social services. Where do I sleep at night? What happens to my kids? How do I get a restraining order? Will I be deported? It's our job to answer those questions, and sending her from office to office is unconscionable treatment for a person we are mandated to help survive and then heal. We are the Victim Services Unit. We are a program of the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office. We help victims of all violent crimes. So our county's open two family justice centers for domestic violence victims to get help in one location from a team that includes a police officer, a prosecutor, a victim witness advocate, as well as immigration and family law attorneys. And it was in that moment where I was like, she gets me. It felt so good to be with somebody that could navigate those notions for me because I was already navigating so much. One thing, I, I was really fortunate when I became DA that I was able to get some additional resources from the Board of Supervisors to have a team of community prosecutors that didn't work in the DA's office but were actually embedded in the community. By engaging with the community, what DA Rosen is able to do is improve that accountability. You've got to be in dialogue, you've got to have trust, and you've got to understand. The community prosecutors have been hugely successful. They're wildly popular in the neighborhoods that they work in. Going into prisons and actually talking to people and hearing their story and also seeing the work that they're doing, I think is one of the most critical things that an elected leader can do. And it's something that Jeff has been doing as far back as I can remember. Your life is still meaningful. And I'm gonna do everything possible to keep them from taking it. So I produced the movie Just Mercy, which is about a hero named Brian Stevenson who has the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. And Brian has a incredible museum memorial around lynching and confronting uh, our racial past in this country. And it was unbelievable that D.A. Rosen took his staff there because that museum and memorial in your face shows you the connection between slavery and mass incarceration and doesn't pull any punches in showing the racial bias that exists in all of us, but it really exists in the criminal justice system. And so for a prosecuting attorney to take his attorneys who prosecute cases of mostly defendants of color to that museum, for them to understand and evolve their own thinking 
was a progressive decision. Jeff Rosen's impact on criminal justice in California has gone beyond reforming his own department. Rosen has been a leader in statewide initiatives for change. Yet another high-profile campus sexual assault. A former Stanford swimmer convicted of three felonies after attacking an unconscious young woman. But it was his six-month sentence that provoked national outrage. So a perpetrator at a college party who chooses to forcibly rape a conscious victim will go to prison. However, a different perpetrator at the same party who chooses to watch and wait for a victim to pass out from intoxication before sexually assaulting her can get probation. So he went to me at the state legislature to say we need to rectify the law to ensure that we have justice not only here in Santa Clara County, but statewide. Joined by assembly members Evan Lowe, Bill Dodd, and Senator Jerry Hill, and a growing number of legislators, we are hoping to change hearts, to change minds, and to change the law to protect the next Emily Doe against the next Brock Turner. And just this Monday, the California State Assembly passing a bill inspired by Turner's sentence to impose harsher penalties for similar assaults. The other communities, other states, Followed suit. Clara County District Attorney joins me now from Mountain View, California for this exclusive interview. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. The victim in this case has a name. Her words have been heard worldwide. And because of the conviction in this case, we've had a whole national conversation about sexual assault on college campuses. He could have easily just said, well, I'm just going to enforce the law and allow the judge to do what the judge will do. But rather he said, I'm going to work within the system, and I'm going to work to change the system. And that's Jeff Rosen. Jeff was one of only two district attorneys in California to support a pair of statewide criminal justice reform measures to roll back the three strikes law and the war on drugs. Both propositions were widely expected to lose at the ballot box. So we reached out to DA Rosen and asked if he'd take a look at Proposition 47. And what we found was someone who was not only willing to take a look, but really grapple with it, really look at all the issues, the potential pros, the potential cons. What kind of impact is this going to have on the state? And despite the fact that the vast majority of other prosecutors were opposed to this criminal justice reform that would reduce punishment, DA Rosen said, this is actually gonna be good for California. It's gonna reallocate money to communities from prisons. It's gonna take away that felony conviction for low-level crimes. And he endorsed the campaign and joined us on the campaign trail. California prisons waste billions warehousing people who commit petty, nonviolent crimes. What happened? Well, uh, we won. <laughs> that's what I was Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's very much well-respected. In fact, that's my opening line, that this is supported by Jeff Rosen. And so it always gets people to think differently, that this is not your traditional sense of tough on crime, that this is reasonable, this is rational, this has empathy, compassion, mercy, and it's well thought out. In July of 2020, Jeff Rosen announced another step on his journey toward a fairer and more humane justice. There is simply too much systemic racism and unfairness in our entire society, which is then reflected in our criminal justice system. One cannot ignore it. Therefore, I am announcing today that I will no longer seek the death penalty. I just hope that what he has done sends a message to other prosecutors in the state that this is the right thing to do and you can do this and the sky won't fall in. We have a district attorney in Jeff Rosen who got up in front of the public and said, you know, I've always had this view that the death penalty is the right thing to do. And then he has done a 180. He evolved. We're in the midst of an unprecedented awakening around racial justice and the need for criminal justice reform. We have to have decision makers that see themselves as accountable to what the public wants, see themselves as accountable to listening 
to demands for change, demands for reform, and then implementing them in a way that real people experience. So as the nation has come to a reckoning that changes to the criminal justice system can no longer be put off, Jeff Rosen already has a decade of experience in making that change happen. I've been a believer and an activist for a long time in trying to reduce the footprint of the criminal justice system. I mean, I certainly understand that there's an urgency, but it's also something that I think needs to be done thoughtfully so that it works. And I would just point out, in Santa Clara County, we've cut our jail population by more than half since I've been district attorney. So there's sometimes there's movements that you hear about where it says, let's cut the incarceration rate by 50%. Well, we've done that in Santa Clara County. We've not only reduced the numbers of people that are incarcerated, but we've kept the crime rate very low. What I think Jeff Rosen has done and is doing, because I think this is an ongoing process with him, is that I think he is saying to everyone, I get how important it is to be the district attorney of Santa Clara County. And what it means is that I have to be in every sense of the word, a minister of justice. Uh, that means I have to look at everything we do in this system. And if I see that we're not doing it the way it ought to be done so that it works fairly for every single person, then we need to change it. For Rosen, it all comes down to finding a better way to achieve justice. A better way to justice is prosecuting people in a way that's fair and treats them equally and with respect. A better way to justice is thinking about rehabilitation more than we think about incarceration. A better way to justice is helping the victims of crime get back on their feet. And a better way of justice is helping the individuals who have committed crimes and served their sentences to become productive members of our society. A better way to justice is not locking someone up and throwing away the key. Jeff Rosen has taken the lead and shown there is a way forward to a better justice. Treating every person fairly and with respect can make us all safer. like the river I've been running ever since it's been a long long time coming but I know the change is gonna come oh yes you will it's been too hard living but I'm afraid to die I don't know what's up there Beyond the sky It's been a long A long time coming But I know A change is gonna come Oh yes it will I go to the movie And I go Somebody keeps telling me, don't hang around. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change is gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. 